Hello, welcome to this unboxing of the Habitat Elevation. Um, I came across this online a few days ago, and it seemed like a pretty good deal. Um, and I've been looking to add Z-Wave devices to my home automation setup. So hopefully this will work pretty well. Uh, we're gonna take everything out of the box, and then uh, maybe if I uh, feel like there's time, we'll maybe go through the uh, setup of the the web dashboard and admin uh, comes in pretty good packaging for a product that's not super old. Um, shipping was really quick too; took two days, I think, in the U.S. Um, so, got a quick start guide, um, which I'll admit I already looked through. Um, it's not super extensive, um, but it's there. Uh, there's the actual device itself, which I'm going to set aside for a second. And under this tab, we've got a DC power supply. Um, I believe this is the Z-Wave slash Zigbee stick. Get that out. Um, and a Ethernet cord. Uh, so it is required that you plug this directly into your router, um, so that way it can be as fast as humanly possible. It probably helps cut down a little bit on the price of the hardware, not having to include a Wi-Fi chip. Um, so there we go. Uh, main star of the show, this guy right here. Um, some nice uh, printed graphics on the front. This doesn't feel like a sticker, um, so that's always a plus. Um, pretty solid base construction as well. Um, it looks like it's got holes here for wall mounting, which is always handy for these kind of tech hubs. Um, and then from the front, I mean, it's, it's pretty bare bones. So on the left side and the back, there are all the ports. On the left side here, there are two USB ports. You can see they're kind of different colors. I'm not sure if one is USB 3 and one's not, um, or maybe they're both USB 3 and it's just kind of a manufacturing cost saving thing, like just wherever we can get them. Um, according to the quick start guide, it shouldn't matter. Uh, you can plug the Z-Wave Zigbee stick into either of them, uh, that should be fine. Uh, there's this third port here, it's labeled TF. Uh, I'm not sure what that does either, though looking at it, it kind of looks like maybe a micro SD card fits in there for maybe some sort of firmware upgrade uh, down the line or if you have to manually flash it in some way. On the back, uh, there's the power, Ethernet, um, an HDMI port um, that I'm assuming may be used to control some sort of home theater center. Uh, it's also two three and a half millimeter plugs. One's labeled AV and the other one is labeled uh, IR here on the far end. Um, the IR one, obviously pretty self-explanatory. The AV one, again, uh, not 100% sure what, uh, what that is used for. Um, maybe as some sort of audio input to be passed around. Um, but uh, in any case, it's not mentioned, um, nothing actually is mentioned in the quick start guide except for plugging in power, ethernet, and the uh, stick, Easy Wave Zigbee stick into a USB port. Uh, so I guess we'll just have to see in the future if there's some sort of uh, long-term long -term support in terms of what kind of devices would be compatible. So uh, here we are uh, in the setup portion uh, for the Hubitat. Um, literally all I've done, I've plugged in the, uh, the Ethernet uh, to my router, then plugged in the power. Um, and then I came to portal.hubitat.com, uh, which and then created an account, went through that process. Um, when I did end up eventually logging in and getting to the screen, uh, this um, 
you know, hub wasn't, my hub wasn't showing up here. Um, so I had to refresh a couple times, uh, power cycled the device, and then uh, refreshed a few more times, and now it seems to be working. So if you have any uh, issues with yours, I would maybe just try, you know, the good old turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, but now we'll go ahead and continue with the setup. So I'll hit register here. Um, and it looks like it's going to download an update. I have pretty quick internet, so looks like that didn't take long at all. Um, and now you can see it's also gone ahead and sent me over to the IP address of the hub on my network. So we're going to be redirected here in just a minute. Um, all in all so far, pretty smooth experience. There we go. And looks like we're in, almost in, um, sort of initialization happening. Uh, this is all real time. I'm not gonna cut any of this just so you can kind of get an idea of how long it's gonna take. Um, though depending on how long we sit here initializing, I may or may not speed up the video um, but I will at least leave it all in here. So it looks like we're moving moving right along now. Just going to be a little patient. And there we go. Seems like we're okay. So I'm um, going to put in a location for this. Uh, this is at my house, so I think I can just call that home. Uh, I'm in Dallas. So we'll just set that and the temperature scale in Fahrenheit. Agree to the terms, and here we are. Okay, so now we're in the actual um, admin dashboard panel. Uh, so it looks like we have a few shortcuts to install devices, apps, manage settings, discover devices. Um, I don't have any Z-Wave or Zigbee devices that are easily accessible right now, uh, but I will make a video showing kind of how that all goes. Uh, right now, I kind of just want to look through the settings and see kind of what's available. Uh, maybe there's something interesting in here or something you might want to know about before you uh, maybe try this yourself. Uh, so, looks like some Z-Wave information, Zigbee information, updates, reboot, shut down. I have seen um, apparently the shutdown process for this hub is pretty important. I imagine that has something to do with um, the maintaining the best possible um, connection to the Z-Wave and Zigbee networks. Um, so if at all possible you're going to want to keep this hub on a UPS of some sort and um, also be sure to shut it down properly should you need to. Uh, it's nice that there's a backup and restore option. I imagine, let's just look here, see kind of where you can put these. Um, so it looks like you can create backups. Or the backups are automatically generated and you can download them uh, kind of as you need them. Cool, let's go back to settings. There's also some firmware versions, hardware versions, and then some sort of uh, unique ID and my local IP address and the MAC address of the hub itself, which will probably be blurred out. Um, cool, looking through it a little bit more. Uh, no apps here. How does if we load an app? Um, looks like they have some kind of built-in apps that we can use. Uh, the Rule Machine is one that I think is pretty popular. Uh, so we'll install that one. That seemed pretty easy. Um, there's also this idea of user apps. I'm not sure how you would install those to get them on here. Um, Maybe that's an apps code. 
the app. Yeah, that might be in here, and then you have to enable it within apps. That would make sense. Also looks like there's a some sort of driver coding interface. Um, and then events maybe that are scheduled. Uh, maybe you can look at the recurring events here. Um, or maybe this is a log of events. Same thing with location. Uh, and then actual logs. Who knows? Uh, devices. So this is interesting. I don't know if I'd, when I was doing my own research, if I'd seen virtual devices. Um, but it's good to see that these are here. And uh, that you can create those. Or obviously you can move straight to discovering for Z-Wave or ZB devices. Um, but like I said, I don't have any of those available right now. Um, oh, it also looks like you can tweak your location. Um, obviously, I don't live in the middle of a shopping center. Um, <coughs> but zooming out here a little bit, that's fairly close to where I live. Um, so that's nice. Um, that should be plenty fine in terms of getting sunrise and sunset data uh, from my location. This also appears to be where you can add the modes. Um, so uh, they have this idea of a mode for basically um, global um, a global scene, maybe. Um, if you're familiar with that terminology, uh, where you have a day, in this case, there's out of the box, we have day, evening, night, and away, and then using some sort of trigger or um, a button, or even just based on what time of day it is, um, switching between these. So obviously in day mode, all the lights um, are maybe gonna be full brightness. Um, in night mode, maybe, change them to a warmer color, the lower brightness to kind of get ready for bed. And then when you're away, obviously you don't need alarms and things turning on and off if there's no one there to appreciate it. Uh, so kind of just setting things in a way mode. Um, so yeah, it also looks like you can add new modes. Um, I would imagine this would be pretty useful for something like party. Like if you have a big party at your house, you can set your uh, environment to party mode and maybe all the lights go crazy and the music gets turned on and everything like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick setup, like kind of overview, unboxing, and uh, the installation of the Hubitat. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you want to see more Hubitat videos in particular, um, or more home automation videos in general, um, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, that obviously helps. And thanks for watching.